Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Ellen Crocker. She's with the University of Kentucky with the Forestry Extension. We're going to talk a little bit about the American chestnut. Yes. And a little history about that. That was very prominent right here in Kentucky. Oh yeah. But then we saw a massive decline. We did and you know before recently chestnut would have been one out of every four trees in the southern Appalachians um, throughout the state different levels of chestnut but a tree that was present uh, in a lot of different areas produced nuts that were eaten by humans of course but also wildlife a really important species the wood was really valuable and if you're wondering why you haven't seen any chestnut around or not that much, it's because an invasive fungus was introduced that wiped it out. And so now when you see chestnut, either you're seeing Chinese chestnut, which is introduced and more resistant to that blight. It still produces those nuts, but it grows really differently than our Native American chestnut. It's never gonna become the big tall forest tree. It's a smaller kind of orchard tree or you might see a few chestnut sprouts that are still out there in the woods. And you can find American chestnut still, but as soon as it gets big enough, it's killed by this fungus. There's been research that's been happening for a very long time to hopefully be able to restore that population. It is true, and it's an exciting kind of first example of this because you know, you know that we have a lot of other invasive insects and diseases that have come in and wiped out trees. Think of what's just happened with ash and emerald ash borer. But chestnut was kind of the first that that happened with here. And so since then, there's been a lot of different efforts to try to think, how can we bring it back? Maybe we can find some trees that don't get infected and don't get killed. Unfortunately, that hasn't proved as successful. While you can still find some trees out there, when they get big enough, they get killed by that blight. Another approach that people have taken is the traditional breeding approach where you're hybridizing American chestnut and Chinese chestnut and trying to, through that process, get the genes that make Chinese chestnut into American chestnut. Um, and while there's been some success with that approach, really what you wind up with is a tree that is a mix of American and Chinese chestnut. So not quite the same uh, American chestnut we used to have. More recently, there's been kind of an accelerated version of that approach, uh, introducing individual genes into American chestnut and creating an American chestnut that is actually resistant to the blight that kills it. So they've taken a gene from wheat that helps prevent the way that the fungus usually attacks the tree and created an American chestnut tree that is not gonna be infected by this blight that typically kills it. Right now, that tree is under review and needs to be approved by several different government organizations because not only is it something that we eat, but it's a tree that they wanna release and get back out into our landscapes, back out into our forests because its loss has been a big loss for those areas as well. You know, and a lot of times people think about genetically engineering and they associate that with bad, but I think this is one of the what, greatest examples of how we're utilizing genetic engineering to really do great things in our forests. Oh, yes, and I think we have so many threats that are out there, these invasive organisms that unfortunately we were responsible for introducing, that I think it's important that we use all of the tools in our toolbox. That technology to produce transgenic trees, um, that's just one tool in the toolbox. There are lots of others, and we've got to use everything at our disposal to improve the health of our forests, to bring those back when we can. But this is a case where there's been a lot of research into looking at, is this safe? Can people look for chestnut now? Yes, if you are a chestnut enthusiast or you just are really passionate about nature and want to do your part, I encourage folks to check out the American Chestnut Foundation's Kentucky chapter. They have a wonderful chapter with a lot of people who are very passionate about chestnut. Um, and whether you want to go out in the woods and hunt for American chestnut, it's still out there. You can look for it and report it with the Tree Snap app. Whether you want to get involved in uh, planting some chestnuts, American chestnut is flowering right about now. And so looking for those flowering trees that might hold some you know, resistance or be good uh, research trees in the future. So there's lots of different ways that people can get involved if they're interested in chestnut. All right, thanks Ellen for the information and we appreciate you watching the Farm and Home Show. Have a great day.